energy can be defined as the ability to do work and that leads us to a very important equation that we're going to refer back to a lot work equals change in potential energy what we mean by that is when you do work on lifting a bowling ball you change the potential energy of that bowling ball you increase the potential energy or if that bowling ball were to drop and land on something, it would use its potential energy to do work on whatever it lands on. If it lands on a piece of clay, it can flatten out the clay. If it lands on your foot, it can do work on breaking the bones of your foot. Let's expand on this. We know that work is force times displacement. We know that potential energy is MGH. When we talk about the change in potential energy, that change comes about by a change in the height. So that leads us to this equation. And if we take a look at the units, force is measured in newtons, displacement is measured in meters, mass is measured in kilograms, g is measured in meters per second square, and height is measured in meters. And remember that a kilogram times a meter per second square is a newton. So we have Newton times meter on the right, Newton times meter on the left. The units work out, and that's a good sign that the equation is correct. In the case of lifting a bowling ball, uh, let's make a little diagram of that. So if we have a ground bowling ball, and we lift the bowling ball up, so from the ground to the top, that change in height from our last example was uh, 2 meters. The mass of the ball is 5 kilograms. So where we're going with this is let's take a look at how much work it would take to lift it and let's take a look at how much potential energy it has. So for this example, do this in green, we have the um, how much work Well, let's just step back. Let's just pl plug in some numbers from our last example into this. So, for our example, oh. okay, so we have um, force times displacement. So the force to lift that bowling ball, if it's a five kilogram bowling ball, then the force it would take to lift it would be five kilograms times G. So let's do five, um, yeah, let's write down the equation. Force times displacement equals mgh. Force is mg. That's how much force we have to apply. The mass of the object times gravitational acceleration. So that would make it 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square times 2 meters. That would be for calculating how much work was done to lift it. And then we're saying on the right side that that's going to equal the change in potential energy, which is 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square times 2 meters. You can see that this equation is exactly the same on both sides. So this should validate the fact that this equation up here is true. Um, the only thing is we're using a little different symbols on both sides. On the right side, we're calling it delta H. On the left side, we're calling it delta X. But delta H or delta X, in this case, mean the same thing. It means displacement. Uh, in this case, vertical displacement. Okay. Um, what else can we say here? We can say that if the question was, how much work did the student do in lifting the bowling ball two meters high? All we have to do is look at how much potential energy it was given, and then we know that that's how much work was done. Okay? So tune into the next video where we'll take a look at kinetic energy.